Well, good afternoon. Uh, today's video is going to be on pigs. Why we like raising the American guinea hog, uh, and we do have another kind, but uh, we'll talk about why the pros and cons of raising American guinea hog may be right for your homestead. Just as I said in the little intro, we are talking about American guinea hog. We're going to talk about a few pros and a few cons of raising American guinea hog on your homestead or your farm. Uh, the American guinea hog are from uh, a European descent of the Essex hog. Uh, and also, the reason they're called guinea is because they thought that, that a, a heritage of it was brought from Africa. Uh, they've been really domestically uh, really grown here in the U.S. since the early 1800s, uh, even late 1700s. Uh, it was known that Thomas Jefferson had some. That's what some of the books said that I, that I read about them. But uh, the whole point of the, the homestead hog, and that's what a lot of times they were they were referred to as the black guinea or the homestead hog, was uh, because of the pros. Let's talk about the pros and the reason that, that you saw them on a lot of homesteads. Um, they're docile. They tend to be a very docile hog. Uh, now, again, we've heard stories where uh, you know, people have, have uh, been hurt by them, and we've seen where, you know, boars would maybe get a little rowdy when it becomes uh, time for a sow to be bred or in heat. So that's like any other animal. They can be crazy at certain times. But all in all, they tend to be a very docile hog. They tend to do what they want to do, and then they pretty much lay down. They're not a real big dig hog. They're not a one that runs around like our blue butt Yorkshires do. They tend to be more of a easy, breezy, lazy hog. Uh, so that's why a lot of times people love them because they're docile secondly is they tend to not grow real big uh you know our 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 two american guinea hogs we are breeding they're in a little breeding program uh, now our feeder hogs are not they're they're meant for freezer camp and we'll talk about that a, a little bit later too but our american guinea hog we choose to raise them up and we're going to try to raise some for again to eat and then some to of course to grow up and keep that sustainability going with our born sow but they tend to grow small. They don't grow real, real big like a big feeder hog. Uh, you're not going to see a three or four or five hundred pound American guinea hog typically. Uh, traditionally, they're going to be, you know, 150, 200 pounds. So we like them because they tend to be docile. They tend to be smaller, and that way they don't in, don't t intimidate us or our children too much. So that's two main reasons that we truly like them. Uh, another reason uh, that they, they they were very prevalent on the homestead, especially back in the early 1800s, and in, and of course on through history up until now is um, they tend to not eat a lot. They tend to like eating and foraging under forests. They tend to like eating acorns. They tend to like going into the fields and underneath trees and, and finding their own food. Now, one good thing about them is they'll, they'll do that, but pretty much they like to become straight back to where they were raised, where their home is, where they've made a nest. Uh, they tend to not like to roam a lot like big pigs. So that's very good things to know, especially if you're on a smaller homestead or say you don't want this ground torn up a lot. Of, the American guinea hog is not going to do what uh, what you would think a big feeder hog would do. So they tend to be easier on your ground, they tend to forage, they tend to be smaller, and they tend to be docile. So there's your pros to American guinea hogs or why we raise them. Uh, also, they tend to taste a little bit better too. They don't taste like a typical pork. They tend to have more of a sweet buttery fat and they become a lard hog. So uh, their meat tastes a little bit different than your traditional hogs that you're used to eating. Now, let's talk about the cons. The cons of American guinea hog. As we said, they are small. So therefore, if you're looking for a big bacon hog or a big ham hog or a big feeder hog that you're going to grow out and have this gorgeous uh, amount of meat, they might not be the hog for you because they're not going to get big as like our blue butt Yorkshires. Our blue butt Yorkshires are about half their age and they're almost the same size. So. I wouldn't tend to, if you're saying I want this big feeder hog and I want to make sure that he's growing and he gets big and I can have all the bacon and pork belly I want and all the big hams, this may not be the hog for you. So if you're looking for that big hog, I would probably shy away from American guinea hog. Secondly, as I said, the blue butt Yorkshires that we have are almost the same size as our American guinea hog. The reason that is, is because um, the American guinea hog are slow growers. Uh, again, they're not going to grow to this two and three and four hundred pounds, especially over six to eight months. They tend to be slow. They tend to grow slow. Um, 
I don't know, that might be the way they were raised, or the way they were bred over all these years, but uh, they remind you of a pig that uh, that's almost like it's, it's marbleizing its taste. It almost reminds you of a grass-fed beef versus maybe a stockyard beef. Uh, they're going to tend to grow a lot slower. So if you're buying these to grow for a season and kill off, which is what a lot of people do with feeder pigs, this is not the pig for you. This is one that you tend to see, and that's why it was named the homestead hog. It, you tend to see it stay on a farm, and it pretty much stays there for years along with growing and making sure that it is producing more piglets. So if you're looking for a quick grow, this is not the hog for you. Now, um, one thing I think that's so cool, I, I read in the history books about the American guinea hog, uh, people loved them around their kids because what they were, of course, they were docile, but they tend to uh, keep snakes away. They love to eat snakes. Now, we've never had any of our uh, hogs be around our kids and eat snakes but uh, I hope that never happens because I don't want my kids around snakes and I don't want to be around snakes but uh, I thought that was a cool history uh, fact that I, that I read a lot of people liked them they liked them as a homestead pig because they trusted them to eat and clear up uh, around the trees but also eat snakes so I thought that was a really neat uh, fun fact so I hope this video helps you see some of the pros you see some of the cons if you're looking for a slow grower beautiful hog to almost become a pet but also give you meat and good quality meat the American guinea hog is for you. They tend to be black, they tend to be short, they tend to be stubby, so they don't get real big and they're not a really intimidating uh, animal. Now, we have a boar. I'm not saying trust your boar, but at the same time, he's pretty docile. So uh, we, keep our, you know, we keep our eyes on him when we're in the pen with him, but uh, compared to our, our feeder hogs, he's like a little teddy bear. So that's why we like the American guinea hog. And also the meat quality is second to none. Now. As I said, if you're looking for a big pork or you're looking for a lot of bacon, uh, I don't think this one's for you. So I think you'd be looking at maybe the, the Blue Butt Yorkshires or the Berkshires or the Tamworths or, or even something like the Durox. But if you're looking for a good foraging pig that tends to like to be in forest that you don't need a lot of room for unless you have it under trees and you tend to like them just because they're fun to have around, this pig is good for you. Hope this video helps. Thank you again for watching. If you like our, our channel, if you like the information that we have, click below, uh, tell us about it. And again, we would love to uh, have you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. God bless you. Happy homesteading, y'all.